um, what is that? Yeah. Recording. Let the music begin. Let the musicians play. We've been free from sin, or when we stay, hallelujah. When Marshall and Yahuwah in the sight I saw, Yahuwah gave him instruction. On how they thought to be done, and those who marry the man will have lived by everyone. We are first fruits, one hundred forty-four thousand. The land of soul offered during childhood. Show that our sin brought him sin. So let the music begin. Let the musicians play. We've been blessed to worship on you today. Hallelujah. The to Great job. Sounded great. All right. You're welcome. Shalom, everyone. This is Brother Doug um, with my sister Shushana. She just opened our meet up with some praise with her song to Yahuwah and Yahusha, known as Marriage Supper of the Lamb, Feast of Shabuot. And we are going to be going into that from 50 days from today. So, um, that was a way to transition into this study that is going to deal with the first part is what is today, the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So this is a high day. 
Um, so we're going to deal a couple verses with that to start off the study, but then we're going to transition into counting the Omer. So first, let us uh, let us go. And our, my brother Dennis here is here with her, and our sister Sally is with us. So let us get to the study here, and let's get right into it. Um, so I'm going to be starting this off here with the last day of unleavened bread. We're going to start off in Exodus chapter 12, verse 18. And so here we go. I'm going to put my shared screen on so you guys can see where I'm reading from on the east sword here. Here we go. All right. So Exodus chapter 12. And I'll try to make it as zoomed in as possible with the magnifying glass here. All right, so Exodus chapter 12. I think I'll read from the Brenton's English translation of the Septuagint here. And let's go here to Exodus chapter 12, verse 18. Okay, so it says, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 18, it says, Beginning the 14th day of the first month, you shall eat unleavened bread from sunset till the 21st day of the month till sunset the reason i say sunset instead of evening is because in deuteronomy chapter 16 it will tell you that the setting of the sun is equivalent to evening in scripture so wherever you see evening usually when it's being specific like till evening it's usually referring to sunset sometimes it can be talking about the evening hours in this particular um place it's talking you were, about um, you were dropping out oh uh, okay didn't get when you read that scripture they didn't get it all right uh, i don't know why i'm dropping out i'm on the make sure we're both muted uh everybody okay. but you yeah i have sally muted so you were you were muted too so that's a little weird um all right so i'll re i'll reread what i just read here exodus chapter 12 verse 18 Beginning the 14th day of the first month, you shall eat unleavened bread from sunset till the 21st day of the month till sunset. And the reason I say sunset, if you go to De Deuteronomy chapter 16, uh, Masha will be telling you that evening and sunset are one and the same. Usually when it's being specific, like till evening, it's usually referring to literally sunset. So, okay, so that was Exodus chapter 12, verse 18, and on this, so we are at today, we are on the 21st day of the month right now. So we are on the last day, the high day of unleavened bread, and part of the commandment was to also eat it, eat it with bitter herbs. So that was Exodus chapter 12, verse 18, and now we're going to go to... Exodus, oh no, sorry about that. Leviticus chapter 23. So Leviticus chapter 23, verses 7 to 8, which says, And the first day shall be a set apart gathering to you. You shall do no servile work. And you shall offer whole burnt offerings to Yahuwah seven days. And the seventh day shall be a set apart gathering to you. You shall do no servile work. Now, I know on the screen here, it'll say convocation. Convocation is just an old British word for, uh, for your gathering or assembly. Okay, so basically, this is the commandment here referring to the sacrifices in the Levitical priesthood during the week of unleavened bread. Each day of unleavened bread, they had to offer whole burnt offerings. So... And then you also cannot do any servile work. And I'm going to actually mute myself and let Sister Shoshana explain what. What do you want me to explain? Servile work to the okay. audience. Servile work is when you do work for somebody else. Generally, your job and you're paid for it. Well, wow, I couldn't say that any better myself. Um, all right, so now we're going to transition from Leviticus 23, 7 to 8. Now we're going to deal with the portion of this study that is counting the omers. So now we're 
moving forward to what we will be celebrating 50 days from now. So counting the Omer, which we'll start, try to start numerically in order here. So we're going to go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 2, which says, and 22, my bad. Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. I want to make sure I told you the right verse. Okay, so Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. And uh, let's see here. And you shall... Keep to me the feast of weeks, the beginning of wheat harvest. I like how the Septuagint says wheat harvest. Makes it a little bit specific. And the feast of ingathering in the middle of the year. Wow. Very, very, uh, very specific there. I like that. So you have the feast of weeks, which is also known as Pentecost in Christianity. They call it Pentecost because of the number 50 Greek um, and 50 is pent. So that's where we get, Oh, actually five is pent. My bad. Um, so the, yeah. So sometimes the Pente Pentateuch, which is the first five books of Moses, that that's a Greek word for, you know, the first five books of scripture, um, Genesis to Deuteronomy. So, um, and so Pentecost is another name for the Feast of Weeks in Hebrew, Shavuot. So there's many different names for this same feast. Um, and it's also, it's saying that it will begin, it will be at the beginning of the wheat harvest. So that's something very important here. And it says in the Feast of Ingathering. So you're ingathering the crops in the middle of the year. So that was Exodus chapter 34 verse 22 now we're going to go here to we got a bunch from leviticus here so let's jump right into leviticus chapter 23 which this chapter if you read this whole chapter beginning and this gives you all the feasts of yahuwah they're not the feasts of judaism okay they're the feasts of yahuwah right there so Leviticus 23, verses 15 to 16. So let's start there. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 to 16. This is specifically dealing with the Feast of Weeks here. And you shall, all, you shall number to yourselves, so start counting, from the day after the Sabbath, meaning the day after, you know, the high day. Okay, from the day on which you shall offer the sheaf of the heaf offering seven full weeks, which equals to 49 days. So the day after today, we would count 49 days until the morrow after the last week. So meaning until the day after the last week, you shall number 50 days and shall bring a new meat offering to you who again this is a particular commandment when they had the sacrificial system in you would offer a meat offering to Yahuwah. so to try to apply that today is kind of hard i'm not gonna lie for us believers right now that are in a transference of priesthood it's kind of hard to keep that unless you have you're eating like a clean piece of meat. You have a barbecue and you barack you. I mean, that's the only way I could, I could really see that as fulfilling that particular commandment. We can still number, you know, the 49, 50 days there. But as far as the um, meat offering, there's really, it would be really difficult to be able to fulfill that in a Melchizedek priesthood, just to explain that to people. Um, so that was Leviticus chapter 23, 15 to 16. It was the counting of the Omer and the sheaf heave offering. Now the sheaf heave offering, we can kind of do. We can kind of, you know, if you have any bread or any grain, you can give thanks to Yahuwah. Um, and in the Levitical priesthood, they would actually have to give, bring the offering before they eat any grain. So when that would happen. Um, basically giving Yahuwah your first fruits. Um, your produce, your what you yield, what he has baraka you with. Um, so that was Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 to 16. 
And so I think I also have a couple from earlier in the chapter that we can actually go back to. Let's see, we got verses 10 of this same chapter, verse 10, and we're going to go all the way down to 14. What I probably should have done was start at verse 10. That's my fault uh, in hindsight. All right, so Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10, speak to the children of Yashra'ah, and you shall say to them, when you shall enter into the land, which I give you, and reap the harvest, so the harvest Yahuwah gives us from the ground, shall you bring a sheaf, the first fruits of your harvest, to the priest. Notice how it says to the priest. So this is specifically with the Levitical priesthood, specifically connected. And uh, another reason it's hard to keep, even if you take the Levitical priesthood out of that context, you have the fact that most of us are not farmers anymore. Uh, most of us live in suburban and urban areas. So that's kind of, it's kind of in our mindset, it's kind of foreign. But back then when everyone was farmers, this was something easily to be understood. You had, you, you had to bring in the first fruits you yielded from your harvest to the Levitical priest, and the Levitical priest would take it to the temple or um, the tent of meeting before they had the temple in the wilderness, and they would give it to Yahuwah, where his name is to be called. Um, and so what we can do is bring of what Yahuwah has barakahed with and, you know, you know, um, basically, you know, give thanks to Yahuwah for that. You know, we can give a tenth of what he has given us to the orphan, the widow. That's kind of how we would be able to keep that. Um, so that's that's my understanding of it is that the only really tithe that we can give is the orphan, the widow, or the fatherless, as far as I know. So that was Leviticus chapter 23, verses 10. And let me go to verse 11 here. And he shall lift up the sheaf before Yahuwah to be accepted before you on the morrow, meaning the day after the first day. The priest shall lift it up and you shall offer on the day in which you bring the sheaf a lamb without blemish of a year old for a whole burnt offering to Yahuwah. And again, this is part of the Levitical priesthood, another commandment that back then they had to give a lamb, one-year-old without blemish, which Yahushua was on the Passover, which is very cool, and, and there's probably a spiritual aspect to that. Um, so for a whole burnt offering to Yahuwah, so he, he, is the, uh, he is our first fruits too. I'm pretty sure uh, Paul actually says it in the Brit Hadashah, so that's pretty interesting. So Yahushua being the lamb of Yahuwah, they, that um, sacrificed himself for the sins of the world is our first fruits. Interesting. That just came to me. So a lamb without blemish of a year old for a whole burnt offering to Yahuwah and its meat offering, two tenth portions of fine flour mingled with oil. It is a sacrifice to Yahuwah, a smell of sweet savor to Yahuwah and its drink offering, the fourth part of a hint of wine. So they actually had Drink offerings back then, pretty interesting. Um, you know, so they would actually bring wine and offer it to Yahuwah, which actually we saw recently on the Book of Daniel movie. I recommend that to anyone that hasn't seen it. So it's pretty cool. So they they had to offer like in a set-apart vessel in the temple um, a portion of wine for a drink offering and then also a hint. Let's see, it says two-tenth portions of fine flour mingled with oil, so mixed with oil. And that was part of the sacrifice to Yahuwah. And, um, and yeah, so let's get to verse 14 here. And you shall not eat bread or new parched grain. This is the part I was talking about. Um, until this same day, until you offer the sacrifices to you, your Elohim, it is a perpetual mean forever statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings. And people will say... Some people will say that, um, they'll say, well, if the Levitical priesthood is not in right now, how is that perpetual? Well, it's perpetual because the Le Levites will be coming back uh, when Messiah returns. When Yahushua returns, he cannot be a priest on earth, as Paul says in the book of Hebrews. 
So it still is perpetual. It never was done away with. The Levitical priesthood was never done away with. We've been in a transference of priesthood. It has been postponed. There is a difference. So I just want to put it out there. Um, so that was Leviticus chapter 23, verses 10 to 14. And uh, I have another one from Leviticus here, and I'm trying to go as slow as possible for my brothers and sisters here because they have physical scriptures, so I know I can go too fast sometimes. Um, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8, and it says, And you shall reckon to yourself seven Sabbaths of years, even seven times seven years, and they shall be to you seven weeks of years nine and 40 years okay so this is actually talking about seems like it's talking about the jubilee here okay my bad about that that doesn't really it's it's similar to the feast of weeks but that's that's actually talking about the year of jubilee sorry about that i got these verses from a website sorry about that so that's actually talking about the jubilee year the year of release um so that doesn't really pertain to this topic um so but it's similar that you're counting instead of weeks, um, instead of 49 days, you're counting 49 years to the 50th year of being a Jubilee. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but let me actually go back to our topic, try to stay on topic. Sorry about that. Um, I apologize for the viewers and listeners. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9 to 10, which says, Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9 says, Seven weeks shall you number to yourself, okay, 49 days, when you have begun to put the sickle to the grain. Now, just for those that don't know, I know that you're going to be seeing on the screen that, that the Breton says corn. Corn is an old British English word for grain, any type of grain. Um, in our modern English, corn is now used for only like legit corn what we know as corn. So that's where the confusion comes. In the, if you look up in the old English language, I'm pretty sure it, if you look up a KJV 1611 dictionary or Webster 1800 dictionary, you'll probably find that corn was also a phrase used to refer to any type of grain. Okay. Um, you shall begin to number seven weeks. Again, it's talking about counting 49 days. And the 50th day would be Pentecost. So that's Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. Let's go to verse 10 here. And you shall keep the feast of weeks to Yahuwah, your Elohim, according as your hand has power in as many things as Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall give you. Now, this is an important one that needs to break down here. Okay, so give to Yahuwah as, many, as much as he's a Baraka you with, meaning, um, you know, what he has given you. Um, and we can apply this to, you know, um, has Yahuwah gave us a barak, a financial baraka? Um, you know, do we have extra food we can be giving to our brother and sister that are in need or widow or orphan? Um, you know, basically what he has given you, what you have power to be able to give, what basically give what you're able to give that he has baraka to you with, if that makes any sense. Um, so that was Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 10. So that was talking about counting of the seven weeks again, giving as much as uh, giving what Yahuwah had uh, given you to have power to, to give to him of the first fruits. And back then it would have been like the first fruits or their produce crops and stuff like that. Very seldom was uh, tithes money, very seldomly. Um, almost every time it was crops or livestock or the animals, you know. So that was Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 9 to 10. All right, and that is uh, the end of the cross-reference I have. Um, so I'm going to give time to my sister Shoshana, my brother Dennis, my sister Sally, if they have any other uh, things to add, any thoughts, comments. I don't at this time. Dennis, do you? I just put the reference to seven. Yeah, he bases everything on the seven. Shabbat.
Yeah. Yeah. Sister Sally, do you have anything you want to add? Any anything? In well, I I think you guys covered it pretty well. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, hopefully this was a baraka to you. Hopefully Yahuwah used us as vessels to, uh, to encourage you to be keeping these appointed times and these feast days. And, um, again, there is spiritual connections here with the one year old lamb that it, it that, that was part of the sacrifices to be given as part of the first fruits to Yahuwah and Messiah Yahushua is our first fruits. Um, and I'll try to find that cross-reference for the viewers and listeners um, that the Apostle Paul says Messiah being our first fruit, being our first fruits. So um, thank you for joining us today. And to our brothers and sisters, have a great rest of your high day and um, have a great rest of your feast season. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this, Doug. Uh, did you mention that today? is not only the last day of unleavened bread but it is the wave sheaf day mm, no i didn't so um that's why we're doing the study on both of these areas because today is the wave shift wave sheaf day and in which we would wave a sheaf of our first fruits of the barley harvest to, to Yahuwah. And uh, once that harvest has been waived, then we're allowed to eat the new grain from the land. Mm. And I guess the way we can do that right now, if we have any bread left over from the unleavened bread, we can kind of, you know, wave it before Yahuwah. I don't have any uh, other uh, new grain or anything. So that's probably the only thing I could really use as a wave sheaf offering is kind of wave it and give thanks to him for, um, for what he has given me, what he has barakahed me with. So uh, for any of those listening, um, to the best of our ability, we are to be keeping this also as the wave sheaf day and giving thanks to you, uh, waving, um, you know, waving a piece of grain, a piece of unleavened bread that we have. I think that's the best way I can possibly well, it should have been grown in your garden though yeah a lot of us don't have gardens and and we're not in the land yeah but if you were in the land you would take your first fruit of the new grain of barley and just uh, a sheep of it and have to hold in your hand and have the priest wave it before Yahuwah because it is for your acceptance, for our acceptance, that um, that is what Yahushua fulfilled because he was the wave sheep. He went up to his father and his father accepted him as our sacrifice. And that is what the wave sheep pictures. Mm. Yeah. That we used to wave. What was it that we used to wave when we were at David's? You say we used to go out into his yard and get something and wave it, but I don't remember what it was. Um, I don't remember, Sally. I don't yeah, think David had any barley growing, but if he did, that would be what it would have been. No, it actually wasn't. We didn't wave barley. I don't think he had barley either. I just thought maybe oh, you would remember. He didn't do it right. <laughs> No, no, he didn't. Well, thank you, Sister Shushan and Sister Sally, um, for 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 actually putting for the input on that. Um, so, thank. I hope the rest of you have a great wave sheep day. And oh, I just want to remind you, we are we are to keep these feasts as best as possible where we are. There's some limitations, but we still can do certain things, certain commandments from these feasts. So. Just reminding our brothers and sisters, we still are able to somewhat um, keep these as, you know, um, ceremonies or what is it called? Um, guard them. 
yeah, guard these. Um, I forget where it says it talks about um, it uses a certain term for the Passover and all the other feasts. You're supposed to keep it as like a ceremony or uh, um, I forget. The word that I, that I read is guard, guard them because that is what he tells us to do. That's really all we can do until we're in the land. And mm -hmm. when we're in the land, Yahusha will be with us. Mm -hmm. And at yeah. that time, it will be done perfectly. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully this uh, message encouraged you to guard these feasts, um, to get into the Father's commandments. And if there's any unbelievers that might have came across this or anyone that has uh, been deceived in any other religion, we, we implore you to accept Yahushua Messiah today. He is the, he was, he is the unblemished Lamb of Yahuwah, our first fruits, the one that uh, died for us to reconcile the Father to himself. And so that the Father could have us reconciled to him. And Yahushua is our high priest. He is our Melchizedek high priest in heaven. And uh, I just pray that you accept him as your savior so that when he returns, you will be one of those waiting for him to give you salvation when he returns. And so I just I just implore you to accept him and allow the, the Ruach Kohadash, the set-apart spirit, to renew your mind and to uh, lead you to keep the commandments after you accept him. So I just pray that I, I, I really hope that this is a way for us to witness to anyone that's not believers yet. And I thank you for joining us today. Shalom. Shalom.